Hey guys, welcome to our channel again. This is David from We Are Growth Tech, and here today we have a very special guest, Gwen from Trasio. Welcome to our channel. Thanks so much, David. Happy to be here. My pleasure. How are you doing? Doing well, thank you. It's a, it's a beautiful evening here in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Why don't you give us an introduction about who you are, uh, what you're doing for Trasio, your background, and uh, what you're doing? Absolutely. So uh, my name is Gwen Sylvester. I'm Senior Director of Acquisitions for Thrasio. I've been with the company since May of 2020, so about a year and a half. Um, I uh, joined Thrasio on, to be honest, a little bit of a whim. Um, I had I was one of those people who didn't even know like people sold stuff on Amazon. Um, I was like, Am Amazon's like, you know, just like Amazon sells on Amazon. Um, but I happened to know Danny Bookvar, who's the president of Thrasio. And at the time it was a pretty small company, just 150 people. He reached out and, and pitched me on um, what would soon become the magic of, of Thrasio. And, uh, and I, you know, drank the Kool-Aid and, and, and joined in and it's been an awesome year and a half uh, since then. So um, I come with a background of business development, corporate development, um, acquisitions, um, have tried uh, to learn the Amazon and e-commerce space as best I can. I've learned a ton in the last year and a half, um, but mm -hmm. I absolutely adore talking to sellers and entrepreneurs every day and, and I'm always learning more from them. That's interesting. So uh, as you guys know, if you've been following this channel for a while, I've been doing Amazon since 2014. So I've been seeing this industry changing and evolving and also the, the people who are related uh, you know, in this industry, it always get more and more crowded. You always have more and more sellers because it's, uh, it's definitely good business. It's, uh, it's a very interesting way of making money, of making a living, of having a full-time job, even, even more than full-time, actually. I know Amazon sellers work a lot <laughs> and we service providers, we also work a lot, uh, but it's super interesting. And this is definitely the future of e-commerce, uh, of the business, you know, even without talking about how much money is involved here. So would you personally, because you started a year and a half ago, what do you think of this, you know, selling on Amazon coming from, you know, this uh, completely being uh, blank about you didn't even know that there were people selling on Amazon, right? So what do you think of the, the Amazon seller? Do, do you see the hustle and now that you're strictly directly involved with, you know, people who are trying to sell their business? I have so much respect for people who start their own businesses and sell on Amazon you know, some people think that I have like lots of insider information and it would be easy for me to start an Amazon business. And um, I think kind of the opposite, like I know, I know the good, bad, but a lot of the ugly. And so, um, you know, I have, I have a lot of respect for people who um, started selling on Amazon. You know, so many people started in that kind of 2016, 2017 timeframe. So much has changed since then. Um, and, you know, for the better, but also for the, for the worse, Amazon certainly hasn't made it um, easier for uh, sellers to, um, to do business, um, even though a lot of people have seen a lot of prosperity during that time. So um, tons of respect. Um, you know, I, I'm very happy uh, not being an Amazon seller myself. <laughs> Uh, but every once in a while, I do have the idea, like, oh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll open my own shop one day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you would ever sell on Amazon, what kind of products would you sell, if you have anything in mind? This, so this is the problem. I've overanalyzed <laughs> this to, like, the nth degree. Like, I've thought about this. I, you know, for someone who is constantly analyzing other people's businesses, I feel so much pressure if I were to start my own that I have to pick the perfect product. So... Um, I, I don't have uh, one in particular, like my, my brain wrestles with that question all the time. No, I'll let you know if I ever figure it out. <laughs> this is actually, this is the best answer that you could give because it shows that you're really so much into this analytical part and you just don't follow, you know, your gut feeling because, and also because I can tell you, I have been questioning myself since 2014, since I started actually working with Amazon sellers. And I have my Amazon agency. I've been working with hundreds of accounts, hundreds of products, different categories. And if someone would ask me the same thing, I would answer exactly the same thing as you just did. I don't know because you need so much analysis. You can't just trust your feelings. You know, probably your first product launch is going to 
suck it's gonna fail <laughs> this is what we always get, what we always say so you really need to treat it as a business and i'm really impressed and i really like this answer because it really shows that you put effort you know in uh, in the in this part of the business so tell us about trust you you know everyone is talking about trust you you pretty much made in the headlines everywhere so uh, without skipping, you know, the introduction, who you guys are, we know that already. If someone is watching this video, they probably already know what Trasio is, what is what they're doing. Uh, if they don't know, we will put the link down below in the description. But what uh, what makes you different at this point in time from the other hundreds of aggregators out there? Um, maybe you can tell more about, about this. Absolutely. So I think the, the biggest thing I would share is actually um, our what our big announcement that came out today, we, we uh, came out with a rebrand um, and it's really all about Thrasio being um, a consumer products company. So we really don't look at ourselves as just another aggregator. Um, we look at Thrasio as sort of the, the future of a consumer products business. Um, and the reason we can say that and the reason why we're different um, is because, you know, of when we got started and how big we've grown. Um, so we've acquired, you know, 200 brands in about three years. Um, we believe we're uh, now one of Amazon's top five largest sellers. One in six American households has a Thrasio product in it. Um, so you're not just talking about, you know, a company that has raised some capital, is looking to buy a few brands, and then possibly flip the business. I mean, Thrasio is really out there looking for brands that have, you know, great products, you know, on Amazon, but um, any e-commerce channels. Um, and then we're looking at how we can make those products great, how we can um, get those products to American households or households all around the world. Um, and really how we can make those products, uh, you know, the best possible for, for those people who love them. Um, and, you know, these aren't, these aren't sexy products all the time, right? We're talking <laughs> yeah, about crazy. bed sheets and pillows and um, car vacuum cleaners. And, um, you know, when, when people ask me what I do and I try and explain it, they're like, oh, it's, <laughs> it's cool. It's like Shark Tank. You're like, you know, coming up with like inventions and all this stuff. <laughs> You know, sometimes like I'm evaluating companies that sell plastic bags, like it's not, yeah. it's not always, you know, the sexiest products, but it's products that um, people need and um, that they buy on a regular basis. Um, and we want to be the company that people can rely on to make sure that they're, they have great products in their households. So that's, mm -hmm. I think that's what really makes us different. Um, no other, you know, aggregator out there has really that. Uh, ability to say that about themselves yet um, and we're not we're not slowing down so we're, we're continuing to to grow really quickly we're profitable we've been profitable since the start um, and you know we've got a, a ton of great investors and we've raised over three billion dollars so um, you know there's there's no stopping us yeah that, that's amazing so I guess it all comes down to as you said trying to find the best product selection of items that people need, actually, even, even though it might not be a sexy item, but I, I know exactly what you mean. This is something that is going to make a hit on Amazon because people need it because it goes and it fills a gap. It solves a problem. It solves a need of people and it does it in a better way, uh, providing the best price, you know, with the best features. So I guess this is all about. So as we're talking now about the product, the product selection, how do you normally do the evaluation of a business? Uh, you know, let's say I'm a seller, I'm a seven-figure seller, you know, I'm, I'm growing and uh, I really want to exit my business or I'm even interested in, in looking at the evaluation of my business. What are the key elements that you look at? So we can actually give some more insights here. We can give more information to the sellers who are probably thinking about selling their business or probably thinking to contact you later. What kind of aspects they should focus on when even thinking to, to sell their business? Yeah, it's a great question. So the best advice that I can give people, and it's, it's difficult advice, but the best advice I can give people is to take a step back from your business and try and think about your business like an outsider would. So um, if you had to put everything on paper, um, you know, 
what would your business look like? And where, where would you see like the positive aspects of your business and where might you see negative aspects? You know, one of the, the biggest things that um, I encourage people to do is to sell your business when you are growing. Um, some people see that as, you know, confusing. They're like, well, I want to grow my business as large as possible and then sell it. Um, but if you've hit a plateau or you are declining, um, someone who's looking at your business and evaluating it is going to say, well, what's wrong with this business? It's no longer growing. Um, we pay the highest multiples. We give the highest valuations to companies that are in growth, in a growth mode. That means year over year and month over month. Um, obviously, you know, especially in the last 24 months, there's been you know, crazy things that have happened, COVID, supply chain, wildness. Um, so there's nuances that, that sometimes, you know, will um, cause things to happen that are outside of our control. But generally speaking, you really want to sell your business um, when you are in growth mode. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's number one. Um, the second thing I would say, and on that same theme of kind of stepping back and looking at your business from an outsider's perspective, is, you know, where can your business be optimized? Where can you cut the fat? Where can you um, really be laser focused again on growth? So a good example of, of advice I give to people, you know, a lot of people think they might get a higher valuation for their business by just having lots of check marks next to mm -hmm. things. Like I have to have a social media account and I have to have a direct consumer site and I, I should definitely be selling on walmart.com. You know, all these things could potentially be good for your business, but if they're not really driving, you know, bottom line for the business, if they're not making uh, a really positive impact on the profitability of your business, but you're spending a lot of time doing those things, um, you know, they're not really going to help you from a valuation standpoint. So, you know, I've had people say, oh, you know, we were preparing for an exit. So we started an Instagram account and hired a social media <laughs> company to, yeah. you know, do this and it costs $50,000. And I'm like, well, I'm sorry you did that. But like, it's not, you know, it's, there's not enough time um, put in there to really make a difference. So I, like, you really want to focus on what are the, you know, what are the parts of your business that are driving the most profitability? and optimizing those um, right before sale. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, big things like supply chain, cost of goods sold, what, what's happening in your PPC spend, your marketing spend, um, what is your competition doing? Are you gaining market share? Or are you losing market share? And really focusing on, on those big aspects of your business rather than just saying like, look at this list of all the things that I have. Um, yeah that won't necessarily drive a higher valuation. Yeah, I think you you hit the, you know, the the, the nail in the head directly because <laughs> this is exactly what we have been saying now for a couple of months. We've been approaching, you know, this kind of very topic, you know, selling your business, grooming your business, making it ready for an exit uh, since a couple of weeks already, even without talking directly with aggregators themselves. But this is what we came up with. It is uh, not a good thing, actually, to spread out your focus and energies and resources into different channels if they're actually not giving you, you know, pass me the term profitability, because at the end of the day, it, this is what we're looking at, at your profitability as an Amazon seller, as any kind of business. Uh, they were asking me, yeah, if I'm selling on Shopify, it would make my business more appealing. Yeah, but if Shopify is actually not bringing you profit in terms that it costs you more time and effort than the actual money that is bringing back, then you should probably not have it or you should stop wasting your time and effort, you know, into Shopify. You shouldn't, you know, you can just leave it there as a simple mirror that goes into your Amazon page listings you know so that's uh that's a good way also social media why would you hire a social media guy right before exiting your business because we all know that it takes months or even years to build your social media presence 
And it doesn't matter how much money you spend on that because it's uh, it's such a complex world right now. Uh, I was talking right before with uh, with Gracie. She does a lot of social media live selling. So this is um, this is also really really interesting right now. If you guys are interested in seeing more about social media selling, we will have a link here up somewhere <laughs> of this video. So let's get back into Tarasio. So what happens after you have actually acquired the, the business, let's say that the business is good, uh, what, what are the actual next steps? How do you make sure that everything is in the right place? Uh, you've done your due diligence. How do you onboard everything? Yeah, so the process actually starts um, at due diligence. So once we make an offer and sign a LOI, um, our team will then um, start the due diligence process, which, you know, if, if people aren't familiar with going through due diligence, it's, it's a couple of things. It's a full audit of your business. So we're going to rebuild your uh, profit and loss statement from the ground up. Um, so another piece of advice is, you know, be sure, be sure work with a professional um, if you need to, to make sure that your P&L um, is in order, um, you know, if there are left out expenses or things like that, those will be added back in um, during due diligence and that can affect your valuation. It's not a big deal, it happens all the time, um, but it can be disappointing to know that your, your, um, your valuation has gone down slightly during due diligence if you um, omitted some expenses. So full audit of your P&L. Um, and then the other thing that's gonna happen is that each sort of department from Thrasio, we call them our centers of excellence, is going to do their own uh, due diligence on your business. So for example, like our supply chain team will do their full audit of your supply chain. Um, it's sort of for two reasons. They're evaluating the business, but they're also learning your business. So mm -hmm. the idea is when we sign that asset purchase agreement, when we close the deal, um, our due diligence or our, excuse me, our supply chain team is like, I already know how to run this, this business's yeah. supply chain. Um, I've learned it during due diligence. So, um, and then the third part of due diligence is really a lot of the legal aspects. So actually negotiating the, the asset purchase agreement. Um, but once we, we close the agreement, then each team, each department uh, will have a strategy for um, ways that they see to optimize the business. So there's a brand manager that is sort of like the mini CEO of the brand. Mm -hmm. um, they're responsible for the overall strategy. And then each department will have their own strategy on how to optimize the business. So you might have our, our PPC team. They have their own strategy of, of what they will do with the brand. Maybe our creative team wants to work on some um, you know, re repackaging or um, new photos. Um, their supply chain team might see ways to optimize the supply chain. So each, each department will kind of create their own strategy and then work in concert to execute on that. Um, yeah. And that's another reason why Thrasio has been so successful at growing brands as fast as we have is because we have all these different teams that can execute on these strategies simultaneously so yeah you know and you as a seller you know you could be the best you know amazon operator out there and seller but if you have a team of two or three people which is yeah the, right same size as uh most businesses we buy you just don't have the bandwidth to execute on all of these different strategies at once um and, and we're able to do that so um that's that's kind of how the brand rolls into our system and processes and and that's how we're able to achieve that um, high level of growth definitely definitely so it's thanks to this you know granular division of different departments that you have and <clears throat> each one of them is specialized you, you said this excellence uh teams that they actually take care of different parts of your brand whether it's uh promotion or optimization uh supply chain you know anything so that is definitely much better than 
you know, as a brand owner, you know your business, you've been doing it for several years, but when you put it in the hand of experts who have been also doing it for several years and there are a lot more and they will only focus on that, then it's different, different you know, it's a different thing. It's a game changer here. Let, let's give a little bit of a hint of what are the main categories that you guys are looking at, you know, into to purchasing. So if, if I'm again, once, once again, a seller, and so I would already have an idea if my product is actually going to be interesting for you guys or not. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to answer your question the opposite way and tell you <laughs> what, what we don't buy because truly we're, we're pretty product agnostic. Um, we buy a lot of different categories, but there's, there's a few that we steer away from. Um, so categories like um, apparel, um, food, um, anything high tech, uh, one of the, you know, all of those things, um, have a, a common thread and that's that they have obsolescence risk. So they are products that rely on, you know, iteration all the time. So, you know, we're, we're not looking to, um, you know, be in style all the time or, or be a, a tech firm that's constantly rolling out the newest version of, of a tech product, you know, even so much as like cell phone cases and, mm -hmm. you know, not that they're super high tech, but new cell phones come out all the time and you have to um, create products for them. So we have mostly steered away from those categories. Um, and, and just because it, it doesn't really work with, with our model um, as we're trying to optimize and grow these Definitely. brands and the need to keep, you know, Keeping stability up yeah. and everything it just it just doesn't work so those are really the ones that we that we don't buy we don't look at um i'd say supplements is another one that uh we have bought a few supplement brands um we like the supplement space uh, but it's been a difficult category to find really high quality products yeah. in. so we're just very discerning when it comes to um when it comes to supplements. Um, and then I'd say not on a category level, but when we're looking at products, quality does matter um, mm. to us. We know that if we want to be, you know, the number one product in its category on Amazon, you have to sell a high quality product. So um, yeah, we, we're looking for brands with high quality products. We're looking for brands that um, are already um, highly ranked in their categories. And that they have what we call a review moat around them. So, you know, they're they're far exceeding the, the next competitor in their category when it comes to, you know, the amount of reviews that they have and sort of their quality versus the the other competitors in that in that category. Definitely. One of the few last things that I want to ask you, because, uh, you know, we always keep our videos super short. I just have two questions. The first one is this. What happens after the, the business owner has sold their business to you guys? Um, what do they expect uh, and uh, in terms of payout? Do you have a you know, one-time payout or you also pay some kind of interest or depending on the performance or do you, do you, you know, pay over the time? How, how does it work? What can they expect uh, after selling the business to you? Sure. So most of the deals that we do um, have the following structure that we don't always use this structure, but I'd say you know, eight out of 10 are, it's an upfront cash payment. So um, when, the, when the deal closes, when we sign that asset purchase agreement, you know, money goes into escrow as soon as migration starts happening, you know, a couple of days later, um, the upfront cash payment is released from escrow. So that's typically a, a multiple of your trailing 12 months profit or EBITDA number. Um, so that's your upfront payment. Um, typically also, Inventory is paid right up front. Um, so about that same time that that upfront payment is paid, we will pay you for your inventory. Um, and then most deals will also have what's called a stability payment, which is a deferred payment typically happens at the end of the first year. It's kind of like a bonus for the business doing well. So most of the time it's as long as the business grows in that first year, you get kind of like an, an extra bonus payment then. And then also most deals that we do have what we call performance payments um, or it's a profit share agreement. 
Um, and I think this is you know, really where Thoracio shines compared to other aggregators. Um, so the way that it works is it's, it's typically, you know, you get a percentage of the incremental profit that Thoracio um, is able to achieve in the, with the business. Um, and you don't have to work for us or really do anything in order to make those yeah. events happen. So, you know, you can, you can take your upfront cash and, you know, go buy a boat and sail away. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So you, you keep getting paid. If, if trust is doing the job, you, you get more money. So that, that's good. You don't have to do anything. Let's talk a little bit about numbers. I want to know, you know, how many businesses you have you already successfully acquired? How many you have in the pipeline? How many products or, or how many brands you already have acquired? Uh, let's talk about this year. So 2021 in review. And uh, where, uh, what, are, what are the locations where you're mostly active? Whether it's, uh, you know, you're getting sellers from, from America, from Europe, from, from China, from the rest of the world. Um, tell us some numbers. Yeah. So we've acquired 200 brands, um, over 200 brands at this point. Uh, we right now are closing um, about one deal per week. So um, that's, that's how fast we're moving. The pipeline uh, you know, has never been bigger. The market for the number of sellers looking to exit their business um, has never been larger. And I think that's in response to, um, you know, just the market being really hot um, right now. So, you know, a year ago, it was much harder to convince uh, an Amazon seller to yeah. sell their business than, than it is today. So it makes it really fun. Um, it makes us, it gives us the ability to be very picky about which businesses uh, we buy. Um, but, uh, but, you know, we, we just get to look at a ton of businesses and, and pick the best ones. Um, the ones that really fit our, our criteria. Um, let's see, 2021, I think we did like 80 acquisition, maybe 70, 80 acquisition. I'm wow. Not sure yeah on that number it's half, um, yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. Um, <clears throat> well we'll have to see as soon as the year ends I'll give you an update on that number um, but it's it's you know more and more every quarter um, bigger and bigger deals every quarter as well um, yeah so that's that's kind of some of the numbers I think we sell something like 30,000 different products uh, on Amazon and um, yeah just uh, that's every great. Day. Yeah, really um, growing. every time you see Trust You, you see associated to the number, the evaluation of this company. So where is the current evaluation today of Trust You? The latest I can give you is, is the latest <laughs> we published, which is somewhere between five to $10 billion. Um, so, uh, you know, we have a great, uh, a great foundation built. Um, I think we have great momentum. Um, I think 2022 is going to be an amazing year for us. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think we'll see the market um, you know, calm down would probably be the wrong words to use, but I think we'll see some consolidation of some aggregators in the market. I think we'll see a few um, companies kind of rise to the top and, and do most of the transactions. Um, but I think it'll be a little bit more stable for sellers to kind of predict what's going to yeah. happen. Um, whereas this year was, was a little nutty. <laughs> yeah. I see you guys are doing also a lot of events in China. I think you already had, like, you have hosted yourself, trust you, like two or three events already this year in China. Is that correct? Um, how do you see the Chinese market going? I mean, when I went to talk with aggregators, some of them, most of them, probably, you know, the smallest one, they tell me, uh, we try to stay away from China. It's a, it's a dangerous place. It's hard to understand. So, uh, how does it work in your opinion? What is your plan? How do you think you can crack the Chinese market? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, and yes, we, we are acquiring brands all over the world. So we have offices in London and Germany and China um, and, and we're uh, making acquisitions of, of really global brands. We do have a very strong team uh, in China, both on the acquisition side um, and brand management side. So um, they are actively you know, managing brands that we're acquiring and looking for, for brands to buy. This was um, a huge step for us in 2021. Uh, last year, you know, it was very easy to say like, you know, we, we could never buy a Chinese brand. It would just not yeah. work, it's too difficult. Um, there's too much risk, um, but we've invested a lot in our, our team in China and they have done a phenomenal job 
you know, working with Chinese sellers and establishing trust um, in the Chinese market. Um, we've got an awesome pipeline right now of sellers working with us to, to sell their businesses to us. I think it's an enormous opportunity, um, but I do think it takes the right team to be able to execute there. Um, I'll, I'll tell you a personal story at end of 2020, um, I was working directly with a, a, a Chinese seller with the help of a translator and um, great brand, um, excellent seller. Um, you know, we got all the way to the end and then they just disappeared on me. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, <yeah. laughs> you know, and uh, I, I, I just wasn't quite sure what had happened. Um, and uh, so, you know, we lost contact for a few months. Um, but uh, our, our head of China, Al Lim, who is phenomenal, um, actually was able to reconnect with the seller, um, visit with her, and ended up being able to close that deal for us in early 2021. So, um, you know, it's, it's not my personal area of expertise, but I think we yeah. have a great team there. Um, and that's what's really been able to help us launch into that market and be successful. Yeah. There. Yeah. I've, I've lived in China. I've been doing business with Chinese sellers for, uh, for years now. You know, my company is in Hong Kong. I've been working in Shenzhen. Uh, mm -hmm. So I can definitely tell you that there's a lot of work to be made in order to, to be able to understand the culture, to, to close deals with Chinese sellers. So yeah, this, this was definitely, you know, uh, a lot of information here, a lot of tips that we gave to the sellers here. Is there anything else you would like to see? Maybe how do you see, how do you, do, is there anything else you would like to say? Maybe how you, you see the, the ne next year, 2022, looking forward, what do you think is going to be in this, in this Amazon, aggr Amazon aggregator business, uh, selling your FBA business or, you know, anything in particular you would like to, to share with us? I think the last thing I'd want to share is that, um, you know, I think there will be a few companies, like I said before, who really emerge as being, you know, the, the companies that are going to be long term in this space. Um, and I think every single one of them is going to have niches in the market where they really excel. Um, and as a, as a seller, when you look to exit your business, you know, you should really shop the market and figure out which buyer is the best for you. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think every seller should sell to Thrasio. Um, you know, while I love doing deals, um, I love me. <laughs> like we might not be the best option for everybody. So, you know, my, my advice to everyone is learn as much as you can about the company you're looking to sell to interview them. We're really good at asking a million questions about your business. <laughs> Um, ask us questions, um, get, get to know who we are and uh, what we're looking for and our ability to help grow your business. Because, you know, what's really important, especially if you're taking a structure like the one I just um, outlined that Thrasio typically uses, is what are, what are we going to do with your brand after close of, of sales? So, um, you know, and what's the upside potential, your total payout going to look like? Um, so really getting to know your buyer and making sure that they are meeting your needs um, and your, your plan for an exit, that's, that's the best advice I can give everybody. Yeah, that's amazing. So get ready, guys. Don't just focus on one aggregator or another. Shop around. <laughs> Take a look at the different, you know, possibilities. You know, probably you, you, your products are a better fit for this aggregator or for the other aggregator. So, and also, I like this one. Look at the total payout. Because it, it's not just the, the one that you get up front, but it might be also what you get throughout the years. So, yeah. yeah. So, when this was really good. It was amazing content. Thank you for, thank you so much for being here with us. I guess, you know, we, we, we learned a lot today here. Also, how to get ready, how to think about it and uh, what to do later. So, yeah, uh, we will leave the... Uh, Trust your website down, uh, contact information, how to get in touch directly with you or with your team. And uh, yeah, I guess this is all for now. So thank you very much for being here. Great. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.